For the first time ever, we have both Tom and David in the studio, and they are going to be reviewing the past 12 months of film. It's Art House versus Mainstream. Welcome to the first ever Keys News Film Off. So, the way it works is I'll give you both a category and each have 60 seconds to explain the films that you think fit into the category. When you hear this sound, that means you have 10 seconds to finish. Tom, you're going to go first and David, you're going to go second. So, Tom, what are your three best films of 2014? Go ahead. Start number three, we've got Dallas Buyers Club. Matthew McConaughey plays a, a HIV positive man who's a bit bigoted and all of a sudden, you, you know, he grows through the film. It's really sort of by the numbers, but it's, absolutely, it's a really powerful performance from Matthew McConaughey. Absolutely loved it. Actually made me cry in places. Really cannot say enough good things about this film. Um, yeah, really started the McConaughey's for me. Think about that. It's getting a bit emotional watching these films. Um, it's, it's a good film with really solid performances. I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, it's not in my um, top three, but it is That's a really good film. You made the mistake by not putting it in the top three. <laughs> but no, this is a really solid film. It's more than a solid film. It's one of those films that when I watched it. Remember, it, you've got two more films, please. Oh, Tom. sugar, yeah. Um, Oh, 20 seconds to tell me your two films. Paddington, Big Bear, Hug of a Movie, absolutely loved it. Have you seen it? Yep, I really enjoyed it. It was a bit, um, too many pop culture references, but otherwise it's no, terrific. No, 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 I want to hear one more film. Guardians of the Galaxy, the best film of the year. The spectacle, the action, the, 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 the humour. So good. One. Tom, you are out. Wow. Wow. That was a close call there, Tom. We're going to skip over to David, and you're yeah. going to tell me your three film, best films of 2014. Three, two, one. Go. So number three is a French film called Two Days, One Night by um, two power directors, the Dardenne brothers. They're sort of really terrific film actors. It uh, stars uh, Marion Cotillard. She really gives an all-out performance as someone who's recovered from a mental illness and has come back to work to find she no longer has a job. So she has to try and sort of convince all the other workers why she should still have the job. Cinema's all about escapism, but this is the complete opposite. This is a social realist film, and it really sort of gives us real people, and it's a really sort of solid, really terrific film. I'm shocked, David. You chose a foreign film as you said since number three. What a well, 30 it, seconds. The, you the got next two, two are more, more films. Number two is 12 Years a Slave, uh, directed by um, Steve McQueen. He's done some art house films in the past, but I think this is a lot more accessible. It's a really brutal film about sort of the horrors of slavery, and I think it's a really truthful film, and it's um, really powerful, and it's terrifically acted, and a tremendous film. Want to hear another film? Um, but by Six. far and away, far boyhood, Richard Linklater's film, just about the magic of cinema, the magic of growing up, a really terrific film that everybody should see. Thanks, Tom. Well, we also have a very special treat for you. For one show only, Keys News Hall of Fame member Will Carlisle has returned to offer his review of the past year in film. Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are now coming to the end of 2014 and with the end of a year comes a time for reflection and introspection. Now, Keys TV News has asked me to provide my best and worst movies of 2014 and I'm more than happy to oblige. Let's get started. 2014 was an incredibly strong year for film, particularly animation. Movies such as How to Train Your Dragon 2 and The Box Trolls were incredible bundles of joy for the entire family, but the movie that stood out from the rest and wound up being the biggest surprise of 2014 was The Lego Movie. A unique animation style, strong well-defined characters, jokes that hit bullseyes almost every time, and an emotionally effective narrative makes The Lego Movie my favourite animated film of 2014. Awesome! Next up, smart blockbusters were out in full force this year with Interstellar, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and Guardians of the Galaxy, but my number two spot goes to X-Men Days of Future Past. It's amazing when you consider that only a few years ago, this franchise was considered broken beyond repair, but with Days of Future Past, we get the best of both worlds with two incredibly accomplished casts, a sense of heart and awe, as well as narrative pathos. I can't wait to see where this franchise goes next. We've been given a second chance. And my number one movie of the year exemplifies that the UK film industry had a terrific year. The double, the imitation game and pride proved that this country can still produce high quality feature length entertainment and the culmination of this was Frank, a fictionalised interpretation of the offbeat musical comedian Frank Sidebottom, with Michael Fassbender wearing the paper mache head. It's a quirky comedy but also intensely powerful as it tries to get into the head of its protagonist with an ending that is devastating but so very, very beautiful. Frank is my favourite favorite movie of 2014. The head. Take it off. I have a certificate. 
As good as it is to acknowledge the best of the year, we can't forget the worst, and without hesitation, the worst movie of the year easily goes to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, a feature-length trailer for future movies in the franchise, a movie that doesn't even fit the minimum requirements for a movie, by offering nothing in the way of narrative, character development, or even a sense of fun. A recent hack at Sony Pictures has revealed that Sony do not have a clue what to do with the franchise behind the scenes, but with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, we did not need a major hack to figure that out. That was my year-end wrap-up, and here's to 2015. William Carlyle, Keys TV News. A massive thank you to Will for getting involved in the film-off. Next, guys, is your worst film of 2014. David, this time we're going to let you go first. Your 60 seconds start now. Well, I think worse is perhaps the wrong word, but certainly the film that I was most disappointed by this year was um, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. What? Captain America 2 is one of the... I'll hold him back, David. Please carry on. You've only well, got a few seconds left. I really enjoyed the first one. I thought it was, a, I thought it was a good, fun um, World War II romp, whereas this one, I think, it put, takes it to the 21st century. It loses all that sense of fun, and it's just a film which, for me, takes itself too seriously. And it continues Marvel's constant um, obsession with airships, which feature far too heavily in the film. Robert Redford's terrific in it. 30 seconds, David. He's underused in what's just for me was quite a boring film. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. It, it... You still have 30 seconds. Keep going, David. No, no, I'll, I'll let Tom come in and say. I'm sorry. Absolutely wrong on that point, David. Captain America 3 proved that Marvel can take the superhero... Captain America 3. Captain America 2, sorry, proved that Marvel can Ten take seconds. the concept... David, prove and your point. Prove your point, David. the spy... Can, you can, the I superhero just, genre is expanded beyond... It's just beyond. a film that takes itself so seriously when it should it be more about fun. It's got a man with a robot Three, two, one, David. How does it take itself seriously? Wow, <sighs> Well, Tom was very about passion at that one. He did, he did all right to keep your point there, David. But right, Tom, I think it is your turn now. I think you've had an extra 30 seconds there. But we'll let him go. Are you ready? Are you ready yeah, for this? Yeah, right. ready for it. On three, two, one, go, Tom. Worst film of the year, Boyhood. Joking aside. No, it's <laughs> Mrs. Brown's Boys, the movie. The movie, sorry. Absolute pants. I can't really express how bad this film is. I thought Nativity 3 was scraping the creative barrel. No, this is beating a dead donkey with a racist bat until the donkey's been pounded into the ground and it's completely atomized and they're still beating on the hope of just getting one little eek more of a joke out of it. It is dreadful with a capital dread. <laughs> so bad. I watched it um, for my sister's birthday because she's a huge fan of the TV show. The, the, the jokes are racist. Not I'm a fun. really big fan of Nativity. You like Nativity? Yeah. Oh, Nativity you 1 is good. Nativity 1 is good, I'll give you that. Nativity 2 will let down. Nativity 3, the worst. Of oh, three. that's a shame. I really liked it. Have you seen Nativity 3? Yeah, I've seen bits of it because I was too bothered about singing and dancing. The, the, people, the singing and dancing is quite good. I won't sing Dude, Where's My Donkey again. Please sing it a little bit, Tom. Dude, it might get you extra points. Dude, Five seconds to sing where's it. My donkey, I'm dead. Louder, no, Tom. No, no, he knows it. it. He, he actually loves this film, don't you? Mm -hmm. That is your time up, Tom. So Tom's just explained a film that he hates but he really likes because he knows all the lyrics. <laughs> now we have... Have you got any comments, though, first, guys? Come on. Any more? Well, Tom? I haven't seen Mrs. Brown the Boys. It's one I avoided because it looked terrible. So I imagine Tom's fairly accurate on that point. <laughs> it's just, uh, just unfortunate there's been that. There's been Pudsy the Dog. There's been Nativity Free. It's just, it's a shame that we get so many British films that are that terrible. Well, let's see then. For our penultimate round is the underrated film of the year round. This time, Tom, you're going to go first. We're going to let you get your word in first. So, Tom, your time starts in three, two, one. Go. Most underrated film of the year for me was Godzilla. I absolutely loved this film. It was the return of the King of the Monsters to me after the rather terrible 1990s version where he was a tuna-eating wimp. He was a monster to be reckoned with, smashing cities, fighting creatures. And I actually enjoyed it for the moments when the world Godzilla wasn't in it. But the, and I, this film isn't badly rated, and it certainly earned enough money to warrant a sequel. But the problem is, most people I say, dead boring that because Godzilla wasn't even in it, were it? But he was in it, and the point is that you can't have too much of a good thing. It would be like eating a lump too much cake and ice cream. The thing about Godzilla is he's perfect when down. he's on screen. And the moments when he does fight and he appears are absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'm going to try and act it out. Oh. So he's sort of wrestling with this monster and he gets it by the neck and he goes, and breaks its neck. Yeah, it's then, feisty, that's all. And then breathes fire down what's left of it. It's absolutely, it's the spectacle of it. That's what it is. It's incredible to watch. And more cinema should be like that. And I've got 10 more seconds. Um, what else? Yeah, no, just a great film. Really think you should get it on DVD if you can. 
That was nice. Nice little finish there, Tom. I liked it. Wonderful. Now, David, you feel nervous for the last round because no. you've got a beat, Tom. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. The penultimate round for you. Underrated film. Go, go, go. Well, I think it's not so much underrated as under scene. There was a traffic film back in about May called um, Calvary, which is um, a black comedy starring um, Brendan Gleish, and it's pretty much a who's who of Irish cinema at the moment. You've got Brendan Gleish, and you've got um, Dylan Moran, and you've got um, Chris O'Dowd, and uh, you know, there's lots of famous faces in Irish cinema. I try to big up British cinema a lot, so I think Irish cinema gets left behind a lot, but it's it's about a priest who's been given a week to say, oh, in a confessional, someone says, oh, I'm going to kill you in a week, so it's about him dealing with that, which sounds a bit off, but it's a really funny film in places, but it really says a lot about religion in today's society, and I think it's a really accessible film. It sounds all religion, that's not for me, but I think there's a lot there for everyone to enjoy, so it's something I recommend everyone try and seek out. you got seconds to keep going, David. Go on, pull it for me. Come on, prove to me. Um, well, it's just, I don't know what my... Good, tense. Good to shock you. Seeing it, he's right. <gasps> wow, we have just had shock horror in the studio. David, is he? Yeah, well, on Godzilla, I think he's right as well. I think it's a really terrific film. For me, it's... Wow, that is right. time out, guys. I can't believe we came to agreement. That was quite a beautiful moment, guys. That's beautiful. I'm glad we got to that point. So, we are now coming to the end of our film off. And our film round is going to be the films you think we should watch out for in 2015. David, you're up first. Are we ready for this? So what do you think is the best one coming up in 2015 for us? OK? Three, two, one, go. Well, I think immediately we're looking forward to all the sort of awards contenders for this year's Oscars. So you've got things like Birdman's the front one, you've got um, a couple of others. But for me, the one I'm really looking forward to is a film called Inherent Vice by a director called Paul Thomas Anderson. He'd previously done a film called There Will Be Blood, which for my money is the best film of the 21st century so far. I think it's an absolutely terrific film with an absolutely terrific performance by Daniel Day-Lewis. So on the strength of that and his previous work, that's really why I'm looking forward to this one. It looks, you know, Josh Brolin's in it. He's normally terrific. Whacking Phoenix is doing a terrific film. So that's, I mean, I haven't seen the film, so I can't talk about it too much, but it's on the strength of what I've seen so far. It's something I'm really looking forward to. So what is it to. about it? What should make me go to cinema? Why should I go watch it? Um, well, it's just Paul Thomas Anderson really does interesting films. It's just, if you're looking for something cinema in an in, done in an interesting way, he really sort of throws about. Oh, it's a really character-driven pace by the looks of it, so it's just something different to go and have a look at. Beautiful. Excellent, David. Are we ready? Yes. For what is coming up in 2015? Go Tom Percival. There's a small French film coming out called Bonjour that I'm really excited to see. Ah, joking aside, oh, no, it's the big him. action film of the season. It's Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I do not think, disagree with the esteemed competition over there. I don't think Marvel have put a thing wrong. I think compared to DC, they know how to hit the right tones with their films. They're, they're all about excitement. It's what cinema should be. You should want to go see it. It should be funny, exciting, explosions. You know, DC, they, they struggle with that. And I think that, for me, Age of Ultron is the film to see next year. It's not going to win any awards, of course. It's not big and stupid, let's be honest. But at the same time, it's a spectacle. And as we were saying before, we like a spectacle. We do like a spectacle. So I'm thinking, you've got a little bit more, but I'd like to ask you guys about Fifty Shades of Grey. Now, that's coming out in Feb, and that seems like one I'd really like to watch. I want to go see Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, you're welcome to go and see it. I don't know whether I so will. So I'm the, I'm the great film critic here, really. Ten seconds, guys. You're wrong, David. That's what's wrong. <laughs> Well, um, Avengers 2 will be one of many films released this year, which I'll probably go and see, but it holds no more weight than anything else. So. Silence from the boys. OK, so goodbye, everyone, for today. And that's all for our first review at Keys TV versus Tom and David. And... And don't forget, and don't forget to let us know what you thought of the film off on Twitter at Keys News, online at keysnews.net and on Facebook. Thank you very much. Goodbye.